Hello and welcome to Web Applications for Everybody. We are taking a look today at cascading style sheets. You can download the source code and unzip it on your computer if you like, or you can browse this code and um, just play with it in the browser because it's uh, all static content, uh, so it's just as easy to play with it in the browser. And of course, uh, we're going to want to take a look at this in the developer console. Um, it just makes a lot more sense to get into this and so you uh, and so here we go <clears throat> we're taking a look at CSS uh, there's a couple of ways to do this we uh, we can see here we can see the the style attribute style color equals blue and, um, and there's all kinds of various uh, CSS parameters color is the parameter and blue is one of the values and you gotta look all these things up one of the nice things that we can see is uh, we can see over here as we move between uh, elements in the document object model we can see what the CSS values are and so Arial Sans like for example this is cascading the body on here is Arial um, Arial or Sans Serif and that means an Arial font if we can get it Sans Serif uh, is a fallback font and so that this H1 this little bit right here this H1 is being colored this it's color. This is ours. <clears throat> Browsers have their own default, so display block, font size, 2 em, which is twice as big as the rest of the font, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so those this came from the browser, and then this came from the style sheet. So these is this is cascading, um, and the bottom ones here are. are I mean, the, the, this is the most important one because this is the one we said that's closest, and that's how the cascading works. You already saw that. You already saw that. And then the cascading is again. We take a look at this this little guy here, right here. And so, the closest one is we want a monospace font family. But the body said the font family is Arial and Sans Serif. But this one has been overridden, and we can kind of see that. And that's why this particular text is monospace. Another thing we can do is we put border style. Now, when I'm working with this stuff, I tend to remember border a lot because it's a good way for you to, to mark something out and say, what am I doing here? And we'll see like when we're moving text around. Border, uh, solid border, a red border, and a five pixel border. So that's what we see. And you can also see that um, there's some extra padding around there as well, or, or some extra margin. Um, and margin top, that's another one. I'll scroll this up a bit. Margin top throws five M's of space uh, above the above the text, and so this is a normal paragraph. But we got five extra M's. Now, what's an M? M is the height of a character in the current font, and so M's is a really convenient measure. There's M's and pixels and and percent. So so margin before that's one M over here. The paragraph already has an M. Um, uh, mar uh, margin before uh, and then well, hang on, come down here down to here we've we've added the margin top so this margin top overrode the the margin top that was part of the um, part of the paragraph tag automatically so so that's these style rules so let's keep on going uh, it, it, while this is technically possible this would really be overwhelming to put a, a style on every tag and so one of the things we tend to do is we want to put uh, style rules that are generic so we'll say we would like the body tag, and this is a style rule. This is the selector, body, and then font family. And again, font family works as please give me the Arial font. And if, if that's not available, give me sans serif font. Curly brace, curly brace, H1 tags. When go through the whole document and paint H1 tags blue. Go through the whole document, whole document, find every paragraph tag, set the border style to solid, border color to red, five pixels. So you see that every paragraph and we're going to change our anchor tags to have green and have no text decoration because they're defaulted by to have um, they're default to have underscore and we're going to make the background color light gray why just so we see it so you can see that particular thing up there and the then if you look down into the the text here we have paragraph tags and and an anchor tag and no style equals down here so what we've done um, ignore that little part there. That's what puts this little thing in the corner. So that's not what we're talking about. Um, 
we put no style tags whatsoever and we put all the style tags up here but now we've also done something that all the paragraphs have to have the same style which sometimes is what you want and sometimes it's not what you want now what happens again now if you have multiple pages as we have here it gets a little tiresome to put this text in every page and so what's really common instead so now we have the same basic rough paragraph stuff here nothing in here we have a pre-tag of course uh, we have a paragraph tag. There's, there's no style equals on these things. But up in the head, we have one line right here that basically says, let's take a look at this style sheet. And um, if we were to look at the style sheet .css, it is in the same folder, rules.css. It's in the same folder as that HTM file. And it's exactly the stuff we had there. It's just to set the of selectors and then a select of key values what we want color blue border style border color etc 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 and so it really is the same as what we what we showed before um, except now that we have a, we have we have to put this into every file and you'll see we'll put this now from now on in every one that I'm looking at um, and so but now our problem is is that we've done something with this to do all the headers right all h1s all paragraphs but we need uh, better ways to mark text and so um <clears throat> and so we have these tags and these tags that uh we use just to put handles on um and um in in the old days like this paragraph tag has this border see that that has the, the margin up there um I mean, it has, has the board, but it has uh, this 1M margin. That's, that's that space that you're seeing that makes paragraphs look good. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Um, and so if, so if you look at that, uh, we have all this, the, these colors. We've got the strong tag. Um, by default, the thing used a serif font. I don't like that. Um, so let's get down to here and this. Well, let's just look at it here the span tag inspect element right there okay so the first thing is is the span tag is an inline tag that has no styling the problem is is before css which is a long time ago all these tags had default styling but the span tag is an inline tag with absolutely no styling whatsoever and then the div tag is a tag that a block tag that has no styling whatsoever and it can be nested so it's kind of like a paragraph tag but with, it has no styling whatsoever. Now I've added a one pixel style and you'll see that these div tags don't have any extra space like the paragraph tags came with space. Now some people would go and turn off the space on a paragraph tag and there's even CSS files that you can to, to take all the styling default styling off tags. Um, but you'll notice these divs don't have any space. They're, they're really kind of a block. Uh, when I put these pixel on, you see the border. If you look really close, you'll see that there's a blue, a one pixel blue line and a one pixel uh, orange or Santa line right there. Um, but the divs can be nested, and um, they don't themselves start. So you'll notice that here they don't start with any kind of uh, formatting that comes from the browser. Whereas if we look at paragraphs, there is formatting that comes from the browser. And so the div tag are and um, the div tag and, and span tag are just our, our ways to put handles around blocks of text or chunks of text and then style those. But then we still have to figure out how to style, how to grab our handles and make it so that our styling doesn't just um, touch one thing. And so here I've got uh, a couple of things. I've got the body tag and I'm setting font family. You'll see me do this all the time. And now I have uh, a pound sign and this says go find all the tags name body this says go find all the tags with a attribute of first ID equals first ID equals second and then class and shout so if we take a look at the text there is the notion of an ID tag okay an ID tag that can is unique within the document so we're gonna call this div first we're gonna call this div second and this div third and they correspond to first second and third Okay, and so you know, first is uh, <clears throat> first is monospace. What is it? First is monospace. Second is uh, green. So everything that's in this block that's second has been green. Um, 
and then so, but you can only have one ID name first. But class you can have all over the place. So we can have <coughs> we can put the more space class on a couple of different tags. So uh, this tag more space all more space does is uh, shove it in from the left and the right, uh, margin left and margin right. So it's kind of pushes this in. And so you can put this on here, you can put it in another place. And so the more space pulls in uh, something here. Um, so here's another paragraph that's got more space. That one has more space. This one has more space. See that one? And so you can put more space on as many times as you like. And then, you know, div third. Right. And so the hierarchical section means in this case, this here, this one's a little bit, and loud is red, so where's loud at? So let's inspect that one. Inspect element. Yeah, so that's a, and this, the loud is not only red, but it's also forced uppercase, text transform to uppercase. Um, shouting and loud, and you can have more than one class on, <coughs> on a tag, and then you can be even more precise with your selection. This is basically, this says, find in a third ID and then only paragraphs within that tag third make their background color yellow. And so that means that background color yellow does not apply to this tag. It doesn't apply to any, uh, this paragraph, doesn't pair to apply to this two paragraph. But when you see div ID third, we have selected this paragraph and this paragraph, and they have a background color of yellow. So continuing on, let's take a look at a simple navigation bar. Now, there's this nav tag that's an HTML5 thing. And if you look at most navigation on pages, let's, let's go to the next one. They're pretty and they got colors and they move around and stuff. But what we, we want to be careful when we build our uh, HTML for these kinds of things to make them very, very simple. And so what I've got is a, a navigation is usually we describe it we use a nav tag, which is a block tag that says, hey, this is our navigation, uh, useful for screen readers, etc. And then we're going to say we're going to have we're going to have two a list of two two links. And so that's what we're doing. Unsigned list, unordered list, uh, and a list element that's just no paragraph here, just an just an include, uh, just a anchor tag. And we're going to put a class equals back and class equals forward so we can style these two things differently in the future. And so this is what this looks like with no CSS whatsoever. And so this is a nice, elegant, clear HTML. And so if you were just looking at this HTML, like a screen reader might be looking at, you can see what this really intends to mean. Now, then what we do is we add a little bit of HTML to this. And so for now, we're just not going to bother. But in nav, navbar.css, um, is the HTML or the CSS that that makes this pretty? And so there's a whole bunch of stuff, and we'll come back and take a look at that in a second. Okay, and so so there's our styled nav bar. Um, so I'll come back in another video and pick up right here.